Okay, today we are talking about energy flow through an ecosystem, so how energy actually moves through the ecosystem. Um, what are the energy sources for the photosynthetic producers? Remember that producers are the ones that are creating their own food instead of acquiring it from someone else. And photosynthetic meaning that they are getting their energy, or initial energy, from light. Photo means light um, from the sun. We also will look at the specifics between food chains, food webs, and the pyramid models. Um, the main idea though is that it all has to be with plants. Autotrophs, auto meaning self-troph, meaning acquiring energy, captures the energy from the sun and makes it available for everyone else in the entire ecosystem. If we do not have them, then that is a problem. Okay, so some questions that you may wanna to add to your notes on the left-hand side. Um, what did the spotlights in the stadium need in order to provide light for this game? What is the source of energy that powers these lights? And what other activities are made possible at this event due to the flow of energy? Pause the video, write those down, think about it, and then let's go over them. All right, so the spotlights in the stadium, what did they need in order to provide light for the game? They needed energy. Um, that leads into question two, of course, where did they get the energy? Obviously from electricity or the power plant that got that. And because of that, then we could do all these other activities like play a game, a football game, um, which means spending more energy. And of course there's grass down here that is doing um, its own process of photosynthesis. Though I'm assuming it's a natural turf and not um, synthetic. Okay, energy in the ecosystem. Remember, we have just a little bit of a review. Autotroph make their own energy. Heterotroph make or use energy from other organisms. They have other names. So we say they're also known as producers if they're autotroph because they produce their own food. Whereas heterotrophs are also known as consumers because they have to consume their own food. Zooming into heterotrophs, we can divide them into categories based on what they eat. Herbivores only eat plants Remember that herb is like a plant, so herbivores eat only plants. Carnivores are heterotrophs and they eat on other heterotrophs. So think of carnage um, and that deals with meat and so they're only meat eaters. Then we have omnivores um, and omni means like both or broad and they eat both plants and animals depending on what's available. And we have one more that's a little different. It's a detrivore. And a detrivore eats dead things. Um, and when we eat the dead things, um, or when the detrivore eats the dead things, then it can move it forward in the ecosystem and reuse those nutrients in the soil. So um, in the picture you see here, um, see what type of heterotropes are in this photograph. We have one unfortunate looking bunny and a cat-like heterotroph called a lynx. A lynx. So the lynx, L-Y-N-X, um, is a herbivore, carnivore, omnivore, or detrivore. And the rabbit would be also a heterotroph and would it be an herbivore, carnivore, omnivore, or detrivore? Now the lynx did not pick up the bunny when it was already dead. He caught it while it was alive. So that's my first clue. Um, we don't know if they're omnivores based on the picture, but based on the, based on the picture, we know that the lynx is definitely a carnivore. And from knowledge, of previous knowledge, we can assume that the rabbit is a herbivore. Okay, models of energy flow, There's three ways of um, seeing things and that is like a food chain, a food web, or um, a triangle pyramid model. Um, the first trophic level of all ecosystems um, is going to be an autotroph. So you always start with autotrophs, also known as producers. 
okay with the basic food chain this is a little bit of review um, it has a producer that goes to an herbivore that goes to an omnivore which goes to a carnivore um, it doesn't necessarily have to be in this order but we do know that it has to start with a producer and the arrows show where the energy is going, not who's eating who, but the plant gives energy to the grasshopper, which gives energy to the omnivore, which gives energy to the carnivore. So make sure you know that those arrows are where the energy is going and not, um, you know, who's eating who. Um, and that answers our question here with the arrows. Food webs are just a bunch of food chains. So don't make it harder than it is, but it's a bunch of food chains that are interconnected. That is the harder part. That means they're all mixed up together. So if you're a rabbit, you may not just eat grass. You may eat grass and dandelions. And so with a food chain, we can't show that. With the food web, we can. So in your notes, there's a place for you to compare and contrast food chains and food webs. And this would be a great time to do that as well. The ecological pyramids, um, you did a, a lab regarding these. You need to know three things about them. Um, the energy that decreases as you move up the levels. Biomass, which is the living mass that an animal takes up, decreases as you go up the levels. And the population size also decreases as you move up the levels, okay? Um, at each trophic level, you move up. Remember that we have the first level is always going to be your producers. Your second level is going to be your consumers. And since they're first consumers, we're going to call them primary consumers. Then your second level is your secondary consumers. And the last level is the third level consumers or tertiary level consumers. Now, when you're talking about energy there's a rule of 90 okay that means that 10 percent of the energy that producers make goes to the primary consumers they actually use it and the other 90 percent is given off as heat then 10 percent only one percent of the initial producers energy makes it to the secondary consumers so the rest of it is given off as heat and of the initial 100% with primary producers, only 0.1 of that grass's energy or that producer's energy makes it to the third level consumers. So they always keep 10% and give 90% away as heat. That is very, very important for you to know for the test. Okay, just to make sure, um, you have these in your notes. Make sure that you have compared and contrast autotrophs and heterotrophs. Illustrate the flow of energy through food chains that ends in a lion as the final consumer. Um, classify a pet dog as an autotroph, heterotroph, and is it an herbivore, carnivore, or omnivore? And make sure you can explain that. That's half the battle there. And then explain the impact of living organisms if the sun began to produce less energy and finally burned out. Um, what, what would happen to us? Um, I look forward to going over these in class with you. And also in your printed notes, there is a place for you to make a food web um, of organisms in your community. So things that are part of your everyday life. Thank you. See you next time.